While teaching English in South Korea, there's one thing that you're going to have a ton of. That's free time. That is if you teach through Epic or a university. I can't really speak for Hagwans only because they're all run a little bit differently. But I'd have to assume that you're probably going to have a pretty good amount of free time with a Hagwan as well. In my case, I get out of school at about 4.30 in the afternoon and I am home by 4.40. That's a lot of free time. So if you're here in Korea teaching and you're not out with friends or shopping or chowing down on Korean barbecue, what kind of things can you expect to do on your free time? Well, here's a list of 10 things that either I or people that I know are involved with to keep themselves active here in Korea. Number one, learn the language. Most cities in Korea are going to offer free Korean classes to foreigners. Now, when I say foreigners, that doesn't just mean Westerners. That means anybody who is not from Korea. So that could be someone from China, Taiwan, Philippines, Vietnam, anywhere. So the classes are taught in Korean. That's the common language. So they're not easy, but you will learn the language. Also, there are language exchange groups in most cities. Here in Busan, we have something called Language Cast. That's a place for people to come and share their English and Korean love with each other and kind of tutor each other and just have someone to practice their language with. Number two, Ultimate Frisbee. This is an unbelievable workout and it's not just a pickup thing here in Korea. There are dozens of teams in organized league play from Busan all the way through Seoul. You can even have your own uniforms and design them too. It's a pretty cool thing. So I left the link in the, in the comment section below so you can check it out, Ultimate Frisbee. Three, volunteering. If you have a heart for volunteering, it's here in Korea. Uh, between groups like here in Busan, we have Busan Volunteer for foreigners and locals as well uh, to get together and do some volunteering work. Or your local churches, you're easily going to be able to find a way to reach out to people in need such as the homeless. Or you can spend time at the orphanages as well. Also, I put a link to Busan Volunteers Facebook group in the comment section below so you can check it out, ask them any questions you have. Number four, martial arts. If martial arts is your thing, then Korea is definitely the place. Traditional styles like Taekwondo and Hapkido can be found everywhere in Korea, and I mean everywhere, particularly uh, Taekwondo. Also, very popular here that you may not be accustomed to seeing a lot of is a sport called Gumdo. Now, Gumdo is a Korean word for what we more commonly know as Kendo, which is sword fighting. And obviously, Olympic Judo. Korea dominates in the sport and you can find Judo all over the place with top-notch instruction. Also getting real popular here, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and mixed martial arts. So get your fight on. Number five, fitness. Gyms. Gyms are here in Korea. Now it's not quite as prevalent as it is back home. You're definitely not going to find anything like an LA Fitness Super Mega Gym or anything like that. But you'll find a full facility gym. Uh, but in Korea, they tend to be a little bit more expensive than what we're accustomed to for what you get for the dollar. One thing I don't see a lot here are the specialized types of gyms for the hardcore, like uh, power gyms or real bodybuilding gyms. They might be out there, maybe in areas like Seoul you'll see some of them, but uh, otherwise they're not quite as popular as they would be back home. But also swimming is available. Badminton, now badminton, Koreans are crazy about badminton and that is a killer, killer workout. If you think you can hang and you want to get into shape, try badminton, it's everywhere. Again, for the hardcore, CrossFit is taking root here in Korea. In Busan, I know of a few gyms uh, that are specific for CrossFit. CrossFit is uh, a lot of times closely linked with the martial arts community, so you'll see some martial art dojongs here that have CrossFit training. But uh, if you want a killer workout, CrossFit is the way to go. Oh, and one more thing, a group of foreigners got together here and formed what's called the Beach Urban Training Group. And basically what that is, is it's like calisthenics training or plyometrics training and CrossFit, all that kind of stuff jam packed into one workout and they do it right out on the beach in the warmer months. I don't know what they do during the colder months, maybe they do it inside, but uh, find out more. I put the uh, Facebook group link in the comment section. So get your fitness on. Number six, dancing. I knew a couple girls here who studied dancing in college and they were looking for a creative outlet on their free time. And dancing can be found, uh, especially in larger cities throughout Korea. 
you can find like modern dance or ballroom dancing, salsa is big, so if dancing is something that you're looking to do, you can do it here in Korea. Number seven, scuba. Certification and diving is available in most places in Korea. Why? Because the country is one huge shoreline. One big difference uh, between Korea and back home, especially in my case in Florida, uh, they do put strict limitations on how far out you can go. So it's not like back home in Florida, if you can get on a boat, uh, you can go out as far as you want and just start scuba diving all around any reef. So a little difference there, but it is available in Korea. Number eight, hiking. Hiking is also everywhere in Korea because of its mountainous terrain. There are many, many mountains in Korea. You will never get bored hiking up the same few. Here in Busan, there's probably dozens of mountains that you can go up. And the good thing about hiking in Korea, many of the mountains have temples built into the mountains themselves, so you can stop and check them out, get a lot of uh, good pictures and memories for when you leave Korea someday. So check out hiking. Number nine, soccer or football, if that's how you know it. And in Korea, they know it as football, and you'll be able to find it everywhere. Uh, weekend pickup games, leagues, anything like that. Korea loves their soccer. Probably not quite as much as baseball, but still a big passion for it. And just to give you an idea, there's actually a Korean player that I believe plays for Manchester United, which is pretty hardcore, so that gives you an idea where they're at with soccer or football. Okay, number 10, and I think the most important one, explore the culture. In Korea, there are palaces, temples, museums. There's historical regions, for example, like Gyeongju, which is about an hour outside of Busan. You can go to tea ceremonies, you can learn how to cook traditional Korean food, or any Korean cuisine for that matter. All of these things are going to come together to give you a better understanding of Korea's past and how it formed the country as we know it today, and the people, and why they're so proud of it. So check out the culture when you're here for sure. So there you have it, 10 ideas for hobbies for foreigners when you come here to teach English in Korea. Now whether you look into the ones that I mentioned or if you have something uh, that's of interest yourself, I would recommend finding a hobby to be involved in while you're here teaching abroad. Uh, it's just going to enrich your time here, you're going to make a lot more friends and overall you're going to go away with a much more memorable experience if you're involved in a, in a hobby. Anyway that's my take on it, so thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Peace. Small size is no understatement. Most adults would not be able to stand up inside these, yet the owners stay inside there all day. It amazes me how the cobbler and sometimes even the customers are able to fit inside. Sometimes at the same time. These mini structures come complete with electricity and every supply necessary to run a shoe repair business.